Hi everyone, this is Douglas at PCC, and in this video you'll learn about orders in PCC EHR. Labs, screenings, referrals, immunizations, even schedule a follow-up or get this family a handout can all be orders in PCC EHR. First, let's create a bunch of orders. I'm with patient Matt Martin, who is here for a sick visit today. Uh, we're going to pretend Matt is really sick today and do a bunch of different order examples. Now, I'm doing this on today's chart note. Of course, orders can also be right on a phone note or on a portal message, too. Um, we'll do it on a chart note today. So if Matt has symptoms of strep, I might click the lab anchor button here to jump down to the lab component, and I'll click order next to an order. By the way, I can create orders before the encounter, during intake, even after the visit. In this case, a clicking order actually created two orders, rapid strep and the throat culture. My practice put that single click order set right on the sick visit chart note for convenience. Your practice can set up custom visit chart notes for asthma or, or well visit chart notes by age and have exactly the orders you need available with a single click. Um, I could obviously look up any lab order I wanted right here if I needed to order something different. And I can generate the lab or a radiology requisition form with the button right up here at the top of the component. What other kinds of orders might happen today? I'll click on the immunizations anchor to jump to that section of the chart note. Uh, if this were a well visit chart note, uh, I might have all of my five-year well visit shots listed right here so I could order them with a single click. Uh, but today, I'm going to go ahead and give them a booster shot. Let's order a referral. How about gastro? Okay. I don't have any screenings today, but um, I do want to have them come in in 30 days. So I'll do a, how about a three-month follow-up? Okay, I'm set. I've created orders mostly with a single click, or sometimes I had to search for it if it wasn't on my chart note. As soon as you create an order, the whole office can see the order is waiting. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. But what's inside an order? What about all the details? Uh, when I created this rapid strep lab order up here, I clicked order, uh, the button changed into an edit button. I'll click edit to look inside this order. PCC EHR knows my preferences. It's learned how my practice completes every order, so I don't need to come in here very often. Uh, but maybe I'm administering this rapid strep right now. I could do that. A rapid strep order has different stuff inside than an immunization or a get this family a handout order. Every order is different. A lot of orders have an assign box over here. Who, who's going to do the order? Who's it assigned to? Um, this might be a name, or it might just be nurse in this case. Labs have a facility you can pick, of course. Uh, for this rapid strep order, I've got a specimen collected checkbox. If I'm doing the test, I might do that right now. And PCC EHR will record who did it and when. Anything a test needs in order to be complete is highlighted here in sort of orangish pink. I uh, like the results here. Uh, this order is still incomplete right now. Uh, I can add notes. I can, I can mark if an order was uh, refused or contraindicated down here. Uh, I want to briefly talk about this include on patient reports checkbox. Uh, it controls a little lock symbol you see up here. Uh, basically, this is a privacy thing. If this is checked, then this order is okay to appear on the patient visit report, the medical summary report. Uh, it can appear in the patient portal. My practice has configured it so some orders are private by default. Uh, and this box will be unchecked, and I can control it right now for any specific order. Next, orders can have tasks. You see this add task button. I don't need a special task for rapid strep. We collect the specimen, enter result, that's enough. Uh, but if I go look at that uh, schedule an appointment order, this order is super simple. All it is is a task, appointment needed. Tasks are great because you can keep the order open and add additional tasks. You can go back and forth if you need to until everything the patient needs is complete. Now, I'm going to show you an awesome orders feature. Orders can have a due date, and, and tasks can have their own due date, too. 
uh, let, let's say I want my practices scheduler to call this family um, in two months to schedule that appointment. Don't, don't call them today. Uh, call them to schedule 30 days out from that 90-day check-in visit. So I will put a due date down here like this. Scheduled tasks are great for rechecks or for following up on a referral, anything you need your practice to check in on later. Okay, you've seen the basic insides of orders. We'll show you a few more, and you can also go explore orders on your own system. Your practice can configure orders to match your workflow. But next up, we need to figure out how your practice is going to know they've got work to do in these orders. How do we make sure the patient's needs are met for all these orders we created? So now I'm the clinician who comes in and completes those orders. I'm hanging out on today's schedule with all of today's patients. Uh, maybe I only watch Dr. Crusher's encounters. I could set that down here and, and save my settings so I only saw one provider. Uh, but I, I keep an eye on the visit status column over here, uh, where everyone is, what room they're in, and this tasks column. These are the visit task indicators. And I can see right now that Matt Martin is ready nurse in room five, and I see by this orange indicator, they've got incomplete orders. So I will click right here, right on the orange indicator to see what they need. That patient's orders for this encounter appear in the edit orders window. We've got a summary over here on the left, and on the right, it gives me the full order, just as if I were right in the chart note. Now from here, I can do the work, whatever is required. Now, I might be responsible for collecting a specimen, uh, and I could enter the result in that rapid strep test. Where is that rapid strep test? Oh, there it is. So I'll click edit again. Um, I'll say, aha, it was negative. That's normal. And I'll save the order. Along the way, I can enter notes. I can adjust all the other stuff we talked about before. I could add a task for someone else to complete and give that task a due date. Here's the throat culture. Well, I already know the specimen was collected, but results needed down here is a pending task. So um, I'm not going to see that until tomorrow. I can save that order like that. Well, let's go administer that booster shot. Immunization orders have everything I need for a shot. A VFC, dose, lot. I can indicate I provided the VIS form. I can click to indicate I administered the shot, uh, and pretty much I'm done. So we can use this edit orders window to complete screenings, nebulizer treatments, and so forth. Uh, the referral and the schedule follow-up order, well, here's the referral one. Maybe I'm not the one who's completing that. Maybe a referral specialist is going to complete that. Uh, but the follow-up one, I know that that's not happening. We're going to call them later. So I think I'm all done. I've got green checkboxes, and I can uh, click Save and Exit. But you know, something seems a little wrong. Uh, that wonderful little orange ball, that visit task indicator, still showing for that appointment. Did we complete all of today's work? Let me click that ball again. I can see what's going on here. Uh, some of these orders are complete, but a few of them won't be completed today. Uh, results are pending, there's follow-up work, the referral's going to be called in. My job right now is to quickly review the list, Make sure everything the patient needs today while they're here in the office is finished. And then I'll deselect this tasks for today box. None of the outstanding items are for today. The patient can go home. I click save and exit. And the visit tasks indicator over here is now an orange ring. Uh, there are still incomplete tasks on the orders for this encounter, but they aren't due today. If everything is completed, I'd get that green check mark instead. At the end of a busy day at your practice, it's nice to see all green check marks and some orange rings for outstanding results needed, uh, a referral, follow-up, that kind of thing. Watching this column is a great way to make sure all of each patient's needs are met today. Anytime you're on the phone with a family, a week later or following up on something, you can see all of a patient's open orders here in the outstanding tasks component. Uh, this component is, is right here on the medical summary by default. Uh, your practice might add it to chart notes too. And it shows me all incomplete tasks for any date for this patient. And not just orders either. I'll also see 
unsigned documents or unanswered portal messages in this component too. So outstanding tasks is handy whenever you're working with a patient the day of or later. Uh, my practice actually put this component right on phone notes. So I answer the phone, I add a phone note, and boom, I've got the outstanding tasks right there. Um, whenever you see this component, I could double click just to open this up and work on these orders. Uh, some orders you might complete right over the phone on a phone note. Um, but what if my job is referrals or, you know, calling back families later? How can I find all the open referrals I need to look at, for example? There are a few different tools for that, but my favorite is the visit tasks queue. That's in this tab right here off the schedule screen. Now, my pretend database has lots of tasks in it. And the important thing is you can see orders for all patients for any encounter date. Now I'm going to filter this. I just want to see, uh, you know, referrals. And I see my referrals. So you can set it by provider, you can set it by location, whatever you need, you'll see just the tasks you want. Now, do you remember that when we gave a due date for a task to call back the family to schedule? So by default, this queue is only going to show me tasks that are due or past their due date. You remember that call them back in 60 days, that's not going to show up early on the visit tasks queue unless I want to look ahead with this little due date calendar feature at the bottom. Um, so I set up my filters for the work I'm responsible for and save them. And then this visit tasks queue will show me the work that I need to do today on the day that I'm supposed to do it. Okay, so visit tasks queue, it's a dynamic tool for following up on incomplete orders. I'll also mention the report library. Uh, that's here in the reports menu. The report library is amazing. Uh, it's, it's got visit and order reports in it. Um, you can make custom reports. Here, I'll go like this. There's some order reports I can run right in here. Um, and you can even schedule reports to run automatically. There's a lot you can do in here. Um, and, you, and you can make a report that will show you, say, for example, a list of referrals or other orders that includes patient contact information right on the report, for example. So that's another tool you can use if you're tracking down and working with specific types of orders. This video introduced orders, but there's more to see. Uh, you can attach test results or any document right to an order. Um, you can set orders to be reviewed on the signing queue by clinicians. PCC has more videos, step-by-step -step written guides. We've got a video where we slow down and show you immunization order workflow. You can check all that out at learn.pcc.com. And if you can't find what you need, just call us, send us an email, or we can train your staff, and we can help you configure your orders so they are a powerful tool for coordinating the care your practice provides to every patient. Thank you for watching and stay in touch.